Oh, this is just recovery. Don't have to on it, I guess, but it don't matter. You recording? Yeah. Well, the five. Well, I guess it's been what four year quest. Four year. Four years of hunting this deer, and um, man, it's. I made a bad shot on him, and we got lucky. Found him this morning. My buddy Greg came down with us and uh, walked right up on him. Um, I don't even know what to say. Well, I've spent a lot of nights studying the deer and trail cam picks, and we have absolutely stressed ourselves out hunting this deer. It's hard, hardest deer I've ever hunted in my life. <laughs> he is a, an elusive deer. He don't show up in daylight hours. He don't. He he just dodged us. I mean, hunters up and down the. 1200 acres here a mile away we all hunted him and we just got lucky this week hot 94 degrees a big front blew in and dropped the temps by 30 degrees i know i never hunt morning hunts this time of year and um but that was the only time we were getting any pictures of him at right at breaking of daylight and so went in and got lucky that's all i can say he is an absolute dream buck of a lifetime never probably ever see a deer like this again but got to sit behind this one anyway thanks Martin Good for job. being a part of it and Greg for tagging along and helping us and let's head this thing back to Georgia <laughs> what a giant Imagine. yes absolutely awesome Steady. I needed a clear shot. I gotta watch out for all these sweepers. This is just incredible here. The movement's been very minimal, so hot. Right down there, down on the saddle. Beginning to think that I wasn't gonna find one up here today. Oh man, right here's good blood. This is gonna be the meat that I eat for the rest of the year. Maximum effort. I'm talking. This is this is max as daddy gets. I'm gonna show you an awesome sight. We just get to walk up on this big Kentucky flat tail. Well, we're day, day two in Kansas. We uh, came in yesterday and sat in an observation stand, hoping to try to figure these deer out, and uh, saw a lot of movement down at the south end of this field. So um, I decided to move in. We came in today at midday, stuck our stands up, and we got in here nice and quiet, perfect entry, perfect exit. If there's deer in the field, we won't blow the field. We'll just slip out the back door and we'll be gone. But there's a really nice deer in here. He's probably pushing 160. We saw him yesterday pushing does at this end of the property. So we're going to get try to get a good, a better look at him. He may be a four-year-old. We on this farm we try manage it because we've taken some giants off this farm so who knows let's see if this afternoon will be eventful so we'll be checking in it's not really cold either it's kind of about a 70 degree weather it's better than being at work we're out
we're on day three now. The movement's pretty much stopped. It's got hot, 74, 75 degrees, winds out of the south. Every setup we've got is for a north wind. And uh, the week before this, when we got out here, it was the highs were 50. Now we're at like 75, 80. But they're still going to move. This morning they were moving good. We just couldn't get on one. Uh, saw a lot of chasing, a lot of activity, a lot of what we're here for. But they're, mom they're a couple of days away. They'll be ready. Love to have me a damn. I love to have me a sniper gun right here. Well, we're back. It's day four. We've uh, moved away from our south setup. We're kind of on a place we call the, the skinny pinch. It's just a pinch point that funnels deer down between. We've got corn over here and beans on the right. These deer just funnel. So we're not seeing a lot of movement right now. It's kind of that period where the does are hiding from the bucks. We're seeing a lot of fun, so that means the mamas have kicked them off. They're getting ready to breed, so it's, it can be really fun and it can be really boring. So we're in the boring stage. Day four, um, the movement's been very minimal, so hot. What we're noticing, they're moving right at dark. So, since it's day four, we got a couple of days left. I tend to get a little more aggressive, so we're gonna move in a little closer to the bedding and um, hopefully be in the right spot when he gets up and starts to get up and move a little bit. But we've got a really good, I think he's 11 point. We need to see him on the hoof, but got a couple of trail picks last night. He looked like a nice deer, but we got a load of crap back here. We're gonna go put out a decoy, and we're gonna try to get a little more aggressive now that we've just got a couple of days left, and uh, try to get one of these deer down. When I was swapping, he'd come right back out. Come right here. And I thought he was going right there. I was going to smoke his ship. Turned around. Got right here, walked up there. Run back around in the bushes. Come right here. Got right here and turned around again. And I stopped him right here. And when I stopped him, he'd he done this. And I shot him right here. or something, if something gets up, just watch him for a minute.
dead. He's laying right there. <laughs> Let me get the video of you walking up on me. It's a stud. Oh my. Hey. That's that deer, Mark. It is. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's that one. That's why I kept saying there was points on top of the tree. No, that's the big one. That's the man right there. Hold him up, Blake. That is a stud, dude. Oh my god. No, I don't think that's the one. I think that's the flyer butt that Aaron's yeah, I know it's the fire line, but I said that's the yeah. fire butt. He's not a three-year-old. It don't matter if he's a whatever he is. He's a child. <laughs> How do you like Kansas now? Hey. <laughs> We're taking uh, one up on the dues. Huh? Dues went up. <laughs> Blake, you drilled him. Stake dinner for all y'all. Say something about them tiny ball millions. I told you I'd find him, didn't I? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That is a damn, oh my God. That's a deer of a lifetime there, dude. Here, let me take some pictures of you. Well, soil hunters in Kentucky. We're up here in Kentucky on our farm we've had for a couple of years. We've been trophy managing and Man, we've got some really big deer this year. And uh, we are in the heart of the rut right now. It's it's tough. They are locked down. It's um, it's really tough hunting, but you, you know when they break loose, you've got a couple of days to try to get on one of these things. And I noticed last night they broke loose a little bit. We started getting some of our shooters back on camera. We're in an old barn, so I'm just trying to keep a watch, make sure nothing slips up on me. but. These does have been feeding up out of these bottoms. There's no trees to get in. There's no way to get in there for the wind. So that's why they're laid up in these fingers. It's kind of hard for us to, to get close enough with a bow. Now with a rifle, it's a different story, but for now, the rifle season's tomorrow. Today's the last day of bow season before the guns go off. We are trying. We've got two big shooters on this end of the farm, and hopefully one of those will show up today with a doe out here and chase because last night I had pictures they broke loose so who knows it's fine we, can, we, we may be able to pull this thing off who knows
been a pretty cool afternoon. We just got to Kentucky uh, last night, drove all night, got here. I came out and just got in a box, just kind of an observation spot, and there's a really big nine that we've been hunting. And uh, I was just sitting here, it's about 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, broad, broad daylight. And uh, I just looked to my left and he's standing, standing in the field. Well, what he was, what he had done was he had this doe pinned in this little drainage ditch. And he was just walked out of it and was just standing there looking back at her. And so uh, the story ends with the big nine. We're tagged out in Kentucky. I guess we'll spend the rest of the weekend in Illinois. It's the first time I've shot anything with a gun in five, six years. But still a great feeling to get a big white tail on the ground in Kentucky. So well, let's go put our hands on him. Well, we went back, got down out of the blind, and we're going to slip out here and see what we've got. I can see him laying down there already. He ain't go nowhere. So, let's go put our hands on him. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. He's been hanging out a lot right here in this area. See if he has any ground shrinkage. So far, so good. Yeah, that's our big man. Got some major, major beans. Awesome. <laughs> wow. wow, what some beans. I want you to look at that baby. Holy cow. Eleven. Ten and a half. That beam has got to be 20, 25 inch beams. What a beast. Kentucky has been good to us. He made a mistake today. We've hunted him, bow hunted him all year and never could figure him out. Today it just, uh, I guess was meant to be. <laughs> we closed the deal on him. Wow. Awesome, awesome. Well, let's get him out of here. Well, I'll give you a little bit of what goes into these hunts. Um, the setups, the stand placements and stuff. We came in here, we bow hunted this deer. There was no tree there where we could bow hunt this deer. So we brought in a hay bale blind. I'll show you right here. This is our hay bale blind. My son hunted him last week and we never could get the deal closed, but this afternoon I went and got in this shooting house up on the hill. And that's where we were lucky enough to harvest this deer. But just just playing the wind and, and the access that it took to get to this to get to here. We slid in the back door, no sound, nothing. They saw us. I mean I climb in this box and he's laying right here. This ain't 130 yards. So access, wind, is everything to killing these big deer. So before it gets dark, we're gonna get out, get him cleaned up, and uh, go back to camp and do a little celebrating tonight. Solo Hunters is out of here in Kentucky.